with a custom firmware. This radio can send off-grid messages at very long distances and receive a far wider frequency range than intended. This is the Quansheng UVK58. It is an extremely cheap dual-band handheld radio, but unlike similar radios before it, this might be the most hackable radio. I like handheld radios and I've got quite a few of them. Previously radios were mostly really expensive, but within the last decade the radio hobby has been made much more accessible by the huge influx of cheap Chinese handheld radios. Most of them have been quite boring though, but with the advent of this new radio we are seeing the next generation of exciting radios and possibilities. I actually quite like the design of this radio. It's not very big, it's easy to hold and operate, and it has an attractive large monochromatic screen with an amber backlight. I like amber screens. I just wish it had a channel VFO knob, like some other radios, but it does have a nice volume knob. This radio is known as the UVK6 in the US, or UVK58 internationally. There is a slightly older version known as the UVK5, which is compatible with the same custom firmwares, but has minor hardware differences. One of the big advantages of this radio is that it can be charged with a USB-C cable. Most other radios require a charging dock, which takes up unnecessary space, and I can never find the correct one in my undesirably growing collection. Unfortunately, it won't charge if you're using a charger with power delivery. You need to use an old dumb charger that simply provides 5 volts of power. Out of the box, the radio covers the usual VHF and UHF ranges found in these kinds of radios. But clever mothers have unlocked the full potential of the chip inside, the Beacon PK4819, which enables the full range of 18 to 1300 MHz, giving you access to the 17 m shortwave band, CB radio, 6 m band, 23 cm band, and much more. You can even listen to single sideband modulation and AM. Although due to hardware limitations, the AM can be quite distorted. While it's technically possible to also transmit in all of these new bands, it is not advisable at all. Since the radio is not designed for these bands, the power output is extremely low, and at the same time the harmonics can cause quite severe interference. The feature I find the most interesting though, is this little messaging app. Especially the version found on this specific firmware. Through AFSK modulation you can send messages between radios and be texting like you were using an old Nokia phone. Both radios need to have this firmware installed and to monitor the same frequency, which will be used to transmit the messages on. The messenger app can be opened by pressing F and the big M button. The receiving radio doesn't even need to have the messenger app open, it just needs to monitor the frequency. If it receives a message, you get an audio notification and a small message icon appears on the top of the screen. If the message you've sent has been received, the receiving radio even automatically returns a confirmation signal and you will see a plus sign next to your message, letting you know whether it has arrived or if you need to try again. The letters are arranged in the typical phone layout, symbols on 1, ABC on 2, DEF on 3 and so on. Press 0 to create a space and F to backspace. The star symbol cycles between uppercase, lowercase and numbers. The up button recovers the last sent message and the M button sends your message. If you accidentally exit the messenger app while typing, don't worry, it has saved the message you were working on. It even saves the previously sent and received messages. Hold F to clear the message history. The range of a 5 watt VHF or UHF signal is potentially many many kilometers with the right antenna and antenna height. One unfortunate thing about the messaging app is that the buttons doesn't have the letters printed on them. So even though I grew up typing on these kinds of keyboards, I still have to think twice once in a while. Also you cannot define a call sign or a nickname, so if you're more than two people communicating at the same time, it gets confusing and you have to sign each message manually. This specific firmware by Hua Kim is a fork of the popular EG Suma firmware, but with added tricks and most importantly the messenger application. The EG Summer firmware and this fork combines a lot of quality of life mods with lots of improvements over the factory firmware, such as much more information in the display, a better signal meter, customizable buttons, and other useful tricks like quick access to the printed functions on the buttons just by holding the button down instead of needing to press F first. It even features a spectrum analyzer, which can monitor wide frequency area and find where transmissions are happening. 
Now, if you've just stumbled upon this video and don't know what radio is all about, then I have to tell you one thing, and that is you need a amateur radio license in order to transmit. Now, don't click away just yet. I heard you just sighed, but give me a moment because I think you might be more interested in amateur radio than you think you are. If you're interested in Flipper Zero's sub gigahertz app or the Hack RF Porter Pack or Laura Mistastic, well, guess what? You're already 90% into amateur radio. These are exactly the kinds of things that radio amateurs have been tinkering with for more than a century. Amateur in this sense simply means non-commercial hobby radio. Yes, I know it seems like a hassle to have to complete a test in order to get the license. But if you see it as a quick course into the basics of radio communication, you actually gain a lot of really helpful knowledge. It's really not that difficult. And once you get a license and a call sign, you also get access to transmit on a bunch of different frequencies and experiment with loads more interesting software and hardware at much higher power levels and distances. The reason you need to get a license is because if you don't have a basic understanding of radio communication, you might unintentionally interfere with other systems such as police, emergency and airplane communication. Or you might even break your radio. It's easier than you think. It's just like getting a driver's license. Or you could just keep biking everywhere. It's up to you. These kind of radios are not designed solely for amateur radio use though. They are also made to be used by businesses. And because of this they have features such as DTMF functionality and even a scrambler that obfuscates your transmission so that it can only be received by other radios with the same scrambler. Out of the box they can transmit on a wider frequency range than just the radio amateur bands, like the PMR or FRS slash DMRS channels or even the marine channels. Just be careful not to transmit where you're not allowed to. You can always listen in though. While it is possible to program in channels on the radio itself, it is far easier to use the open source multi-radio programming software called Chirp, where you can not only program in channels but also configure and backup your radio settings. Until the EG Summa firmware is officially adopted into Chirp, there is a custom version available that supports the firmware. You'll need a cheap, simple USB to radio connection cable to do the programming, and this is also used for flashing the custom firmwares. There are also other custom mods available in a huge variety of different firmwares, and there is even an online patcher website where you can pick and choose the specific mods that you want, like customizing the boot screen, changing the font, or even playing the game Pong. Besides the custom features, the radio obviously functions just like a regular VHF UHF radio. You can program in channels, local repeaters and other frequencies you want to monitor on the dual watch display. You can scan through channels or even detect the frequency of a nearby strong transmission using the frequency copy function. And you can of course use DCS and CTCSS tones as well as sending a 1750Hz tone by pressing the button on the side while transmitting. There are far better radios out there than the UVK58 and its siblings. But it is an extremely cheap and very hackable radio, which makes it a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the firmware memory is extremely limited in size and the clever models can only fit so many features into the radio. But it makes me very excited for the future of these cheap small radios that might lean further into the modding scene. I hope I've given you a small insight into what this radio is all about.